Hello and welcome back everyone to the Powder Toy and today we have a new material that is going to be graphene. Yes, I figured that diamond is too easy to fall into the diamond trap. You know, you want to contain something, you're like, I want to contain it with titanium, but it's it, titanium isn't strong enough. You know, sometimes you got like a bunch of plutonium and neutrons flying around and it gets hot and what do you do? It just melts. No, this is not, this is not, this is not acceptable. We need a material that's stronger, which still technically exists and isn't just made up. So here we have graphene, very conductive, amazing heat conductor, and with a super high melting point. Graphene can pull off those tasks that... Alright, that's a bug, we'll be right back. All right, I fixed the problems. Let's go over what actually makes graphene so important. So first off, it is kind of the amalgamation of several different elements. It has a super high melting point. It's very conductive. You can use it in your electronics. And best of all, it blocks pressure like titanium. So it can be used for all sorts of things. It's like heat conductor mixed with titanium with a little bit of high melting point on top of it all. It's awesome. Like, take a look at what happens when we throw a little bit of plutonium inside of it. Normally, actually, we'll do this first with uh, titanium so that you can really see the difference. All right, so... If we have titanium and we put a bit of plutonium inside of it and then we set it off with neutrons we get a huge blob of lava that just flies out it's very uneven the way it heats and it takes a while from the heat from the bottom to actually go towards the top of the material it's still moving still moving we can see the glow kind of spreading but it's a very uneven explosion and it didn't last very long at all Let's go ahead and compare now with graphene. I'm gonna do try to do the same amount here. Bit of plutonium on the bottom, probably a little bit more actually. And then look at that! Oh man, did did you did you see that? Did you see that? The the the, the graphene literally survived the reaction. Oh, I mean it heated up dramatically, but it heats and distributes the heat so evenly around the entire uh, block of graphene that it's fine. It's actually able to survive that. Now, a little bit more heat, and yes, it gets overly heated, it starts to melt, but it is able to handle just such an insane amount because it spreads it so evenly across itself. And look, if we go ahead and attach it to some titanium, you'll notice the heat immediately leaves the graphene and melts all of the titanium. It's a uh, absolute chad element that's able to handle what the other elements just cannot. There's so many things that we can do with this. <clears throat> I think one fun thing to do would just be to grab a nuclear reactor that someone else maybe has made and just replacing some of it with graphene to see if it could survive or potentially even testing it against a nuclear bomb um, like we just did but let's go ahead and go over to bunker city my favorite testing map all right bunker city all right and now in bunker city we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a wall of graphene right here and then okay it may actually need to be a slightly wider wall of graphene i'm going to be honest that may not be enough to survive <laughs> all right we've got our graphene wall here and let's see if it's able to survive a massive nuclear blast and by massive i mean quite massive we're just going to do a nuke the size of like this entire building of course it may not survive i'm not sure but i want to see how this ends up the crazy thing is that though when it gets hit initially the graphene doesn't melt even when being hit by nuclear material it spreads that heat among itself so effectively oh and it blocks the pressure as well so this side of the world is not doing well 
But over in uh, graphene land, I mean, sure, the heat is starting to come through from actually moving down through the ground. But the damage is actually rather minor. Um, let's go ahead and increase the blast. <laughs> like, let's go real big. Let's do an explosion so large that it's it's just ridiculous. Alright. I don't know how a proton blast would do. I think protons probably go through the graphene. Alright, it's picking up all of that heat, but look! It's able to handle it still! Oh, it's starting to glow, it's starting to glow, it's starting to melt a little bit! But it's holding! It's holding! It's transferring the heat quick. No! Oh, after all of that, it just fine. No, it's it's the melting point's so high it's solidifying again as soon as it cools down. Holy moly! Okay, yeah, it 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 took it took a little bit of damage there, but for the most part, I mean, come on, come on. You know what would have happened if that was titanium. I mean, if you if you don't know what would have happened if that was titanium, I'll even make it a bigger titanium wall so that it's it's even less fair of a comparison uh, to to graphene. All right, same test with titanium. Sure, titanium blocks the pressure, fine, because that's the entire point of the element. But you're going to notice that immediately, immediately, the titanium is starting to be melted through in a completely uneven, uncontrolled way. It is not in any way able to survive this blast. It's just going to go through, straight through it like butter, and it's flying out doing way, way more damage than when the graphene was protecting it not even close guys it's not even close the entire thing melted so let's go ahead and clear this out and do a few other little tests so if we go ahead and grab our graphene you will notice that it is a very effective conductor look at that and because of the rate at which it moves heat along itself it doesn't really get affected not really heating up it's just an incredibly effective conductor you can use it for all of your electrical needs let's go ahead and compare that to titanium do basically the same thing with titanium if we go ahead and spark this titanium you're going to notice that well, I guess titanium also doesn't really heat up I guess the big ones that heat up are tungsten and metal then I know if we do tungsten, tungsten has a high melting point, a very high melting point, but it heats up considerably when you run a current through it. That's what makes it great for making light bulbs, uh, but it doesn't make it great for doing advanced electronics in the powder toy because with enough sparking, it will melt. It's very, very hot. Now, when we talk about uh, what has the higher melting point, let's go ahead and connect these together. And, uh, well, actually, we will do a little bit of an experiment here. We will have all three of them. One. Two. And then where's my tungsten? There's my tungsten. Three. All right. And now we're going to, we'll even heat the most on the graphene to give it the best shot at survival. We immediately see that the titanium is melting. It's not having a good time. Now we're seeing that the tungsten is melting, or at least getting incredibly close to melting. Ooh, the tungsten actually melted at around the same time. I mean, the tungsten melted first and more dramatically. So tungsten does have a very high melting point. Um, let me actually check that code. Uh, I'm curious what the melting point actually is of tungsten. Uh, tungsten. Tungsten has a melting point of 3695. Oh, interesting. All right, and uh, graphene melts at 3,700, so they actually almost have an identical point. It's just that the graphene heats so much more evenly 
uh, compared to it. But yeah, so they're they're pretty pretty much on even ground there. Uh, tungsten isn't going to block pressure though. So if we go ahead and build a container and we use tungsten, we'll do tungsten for half of it, and then we will do graphene for the other half of it. I don't know how I'll actually do this. Uh, I'll do it like this. Split. Kerblam. I'll have to delete this first. All right, split. Kerblam. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Let's go ahead and add some pressure into here and see what happens. So you're gonna notice that the tungsten is becoming brittle. It's breaking and it's broken whereas the graphene is able to handle itself. Add a little bit of plutonium, make this into a nuclear test, and you'll see that, sure, the tungsten is able to handle the heat, but look at the amount of damage it's taking from just the pressure. I mean, it also didn't handle the heat as well, but this is going to be very useful material for nuclear technology and other things. Defense industry, you guys name it, uh, it's gonna be in the mod for everyone to use soon. I need to iron out a few little bugs, but graphene, it's the next coolest thing. Trust me, trust me on this. All right, let me think of if there's anything else we can do. I mean, we can demonstrate the insane ability for this to transfer heat. Um, let's go ahead and build a little tub here. This will be my last demonstration of the usefulness. All right, tub. Oh, I already built this. I already built this for a test. Let me see. There it is. Here's the test. All right, so we put water in both of these. And now let's see how hard it is to boil the water from applying heat to the other end. All right, heating this up, heating this up. It'll melt if I go any further. We got to wait. The heat is moving along. Let's go ahead to the heat display so you can really see what's going on. Oh, I melted it, whoops. Whoops. So you can see the gradient here and it is beginning to warm up at the t Oh man, it's, it's taking so long. We're just gonna speed it up and heat up this entire section. And it, it's still taking so long to get over to the water. The water is at 30 degrees. Let's start on the graphene side and it's immediately, do you, do you see that? Did, did you see that? Just absolutely immediate. And this is where it's taking uh, basically inspiration from heat conductor and how it works. So it can super quickly move heat. It's actually faster for this to move the energy into the water and then that water to turn into water vapor, come up and then heat it from below to evaporate this over here that is to directly heat this titanium. So that, that puts it into perspective. Granted, uh, one benefit that there definitely is in not using the graphene is that it's a bit of an FPS hog because it's doing basically the things that titanium does and it's doing the things that um, is being done by uh, other elements as well. So it's got the logic for heat conductor, it's got the logic for titanium, and I'm going to try to optimize it a little bit, but right now, use a ton of it, and yes, your, your FPS will suffer a little bit. So use it sparingly. But even if even if you're using it sparingly, it's, it's a super useful element in order to do some really cool things. What happens if we put a little bit of Nihonium in it? I'm curious. How does it, how does it, how does it manage? I mean, the Nihonium is, this is insane. <laughs> Nothing ever survives this long with Nihonium, especially this amount. Oh man, because the heat is being carried out so efficiently, it's it's actually standing, standing a chance against it. If, if you guys are familiar with my mod, Nihonium is absolutely insane and it should not be this easy to survive. It's actually getting to molten level and it's still surviving. Holy moly. Okay, let, let me show you what would have happened had that been titanium instead. Just so that you can understand the magnitude of awesome. All right, honium. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's surviving for that extended period. Very impressive. Even if it was just a little bit like this, really does not last long. <laughs> All right. This means maybe Nahonium reactors in the future. Perhaps we can make some that are stable. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.